Today we're going to be looking at the topic of media and consumption with particular reference to reality television shows like American Idol or courtroom shows like Judge Judy. Part of the idea is learning how to read graphics, images and texts and thinking about the ways in which representations can promote particular types of cultural constructs or ideologies. The media theorist Marshall McLuhan, writing in 1964, was interested in how television had changed social consciousness and social life. Writing at the advent of the television era, he was interested in the ways that televisions use sublimi subliminal techniques in order to sell products, such as singing commercials and what he calls noise and nausea. He was also interested in how ad teams spend billions of dollars to tap into shared experiences and feelings, and how ads function through articulating those feelings. Marshall McLuhan was writing in the 1960s, but if we think about some of his theories and we think about media and consumption in the current period of the new millennium, we can find both similarities and differences. For instance, Henry Jenkins, in an article on American Idol, talks about what Coca-Cola president Stephen Mayer had referred to as a convergence strategy. That is where there is greater collaboration between content providers and sponsors so that the television program you're watching and the commercials are not so distinct as they were at the time when Marshall McLuhan was writing. In the following clip, you can see an example of this. Uh, the, ad, the, the commercial is an ad for AT&T, and yet it is uh, talking about the very popular television show, American Idol. One of the interesting things about this show is that voting is equated with civic activism. Citizens are seen as consumers who exercise choice through voting for contestants. My fellow Americans. My fellow Americans. Voting is a very important part of our democratic system. I mean, it's like your duty to vote. Especially when we are dealing with issues as important as who's going to be our next American Idol. Text message your vote. With AT&T Wireless. Text messaging is American. Text messaging. You have one finger. You can vote. It's easy, Pastor. Let your voice be heard. Just push set. You just voted. That's it? That's it. It's not brain surgery. E pluribus una idola. Out of many, one American idol. This is the next big thing. America is counting on you. So if you don't have AT&T Wireless, go out there and get it. Use that First Amendment right. Get out there and vote. <laughs> into the next round. We're also interested in how television shows promote particular kinds of ideologies. So in her article on Judge Judy, Laurie Ouellette argues that the show promotes the ideology of neoliberalism. That is, an ideology of the free market where state responsibility and public welfare are replaced by individual responsibility and self-discipline. We can see this logic of Judge Judy in the way that social problems on the show are presented as due to individual shortcomings rather than due to social inequalities and poverty. How does the program promote this ideology? Litigants are grilled about their life biography through Judge Judy's use of one-liners. Litigants are chastised for failing to govern themselves and people who receive public assistance are seen as deviants. We can see the way that this program operates by looking at the following short clips from the show. In the first one, the mum is presented as the undeserving poor and welfare queen who is stealing from the state. And this characterization 
is performed by Judge Judy grilling her about her biography, grilling her about whether she works, where she lives, and what she spends her money on, or as Judge Judy puts it, the state's money. The second clip is a female domestic violence victim who is being blamed by Judge Judy. We can see again the way that the woman is seen as responsible for her own choices rather than talking about the patriarchy and male violence in the situation that has led to her being abused. Have you been working? No. Where did you get $700 from? I was receiving cash aid. You were receiving public assistance? Yes. So you were saving your welfare money. How were you living? I was living at my father's house. So what were you receiving cash aid for? Cash aid for, I have another son, so I was receiving money to buy him. They were giving me four clothes and... So why didn't you buy him clothes? I was, ma'am. So you mean the government gives you enough money so you could take care of your baby, take care of your other child, and still save $700? Yes, I was able to save up $700. <laughs> <laughs> Real cases, real people, Judge Judy. Randall Howard says, ex-boyfriend Justin McCray assaulted her and destroyed her belongings. Justin claims Randall bleached his clothes and stabbed him with a steak knife. Listen to me carefully. I don't think you heard what I said. What I said was when a person is injured as a result of an assault, the first thing they do is go to a doctor an emergency room, the second thing that they do is report it to the police. Unless it's a mutual fight, you stabbed him, he must you have broke your retainer, broke your glasses, you broke his skin, you're even. Goodbye. Goodbye. Parties are excused, you may step out. She said, Judge, she just wants to see me in court. Justice was not served, and that's all I have to say. No police report, no nothing. I'm innocent. I have nothing else to say, that's it. I'm so sorry for the next guy she runs into. That's all. It's gonna be, it's gonna be worse.